All right, today we're gonna to work on transforming parent functions. Um, hopefully you've seen this before. Um, your teacher may not have explained why we even bother to do this. And here's the reason why. So um, functions that you wind up dealing with in the real world are very unlikely to be a parent function. It's very unlikely that you're gonna see just like y equals x or y equals x squared. More than likely you're gonna see some sort of variation on this. Um, and the idea is we, we study the parent functions and then every other function that you see, the idea is that you're gonna see this function and go, oh, well, it's just this function that I know modified in a way that I know how to modify it. So the idea is that you never see a function uh, that you don't know how to deal with. Um, so by studying the parent functions and then studying how to change the parent functions, we expand the number of functions that we know, we already know ahead of time, what they're gonna look like, how they're gonna work um, before we stick them in a calculator or, or do anything with it. it. Gives us a gut feel for a large, large, large number of functions, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start off with a function you're probably familiar with. So our parent function here, our f of x, is gonna be square root of x. So the square root parent function. Um, so a few points here, square root of zero is zero, square root of one is one, square root of four is two, and the square root of nine is three. Now the reason I'm taking you through this is we're gonna modify all these order pairs when we transform our function. Uh, also notice uh, square root of negative one is undefined in the reals. Uh, our domain is um, positives and zero. Okay, we can square root a positive and a zero, and the output will be uh, positives and zero. Okay, so here's our first transformation here. Um, we're going to add five to our output. So here's our function output, and we're going to add five to that output. We're not adjusting the input, we're just adjusting the output. So whatever our output was, zero, one, two, three, we're just adding five to it. Five, six, seven, eight. So if we're adjusting our y, if we're adjusting our output, that's gonna wind up being a shift upward by five, which you can see right here. So each point has been adjusted, the output uh, has been adjusted up five, okay? Um, and what does that do to our domain and range here? Well, we haven't adjusted our inputs, so we don't change our domain but we adjusted our output, so we increase both of these values by five. So zero plus five is five, uh, infinity plus five is infinity, okay? Easy enough. Um, so again, this is gonna wind up being a shift uh, five up. Obviously, if we change the sign, this is gonna be a shift down. Okay. Let's uh, turn this off. Let's drag this down here and take a look. All right. Now the difference here, okay, we're not changing the output this time. It's not f of x and then we do something with it. We're changing what's being input uh, into the function. So instead of inputting uh, x into the function, we're inputting x minus 5. We're subtracting 5 from our input. Now, uh, the question is, what do I have to do to get my original output? Okay, so if I want to get back to 0, what am I going to have to do to my x if I've been subtracting 5 from it? Well, I'm going to have to undo that. I'm going to have to, to overcome that, I'm going to have to add another 5. So, 5 minus 5 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. So to get back to where we started from, I'm going to have to undo this. So that's why the input looks a little weird whenever we shift it. It's because we're having, um, we're not changing our output. We're changing our input to get back to our original output. So if we subtract 5 to get back, we're going to have to add 5. So instead of 0, 1, 4, 9, it's 5, 6, 9, 14. We've added 5 to all of our inputs to get back to our original output. What's that going to look like graphically? Well, 
that's going to increase all of our x values by 5. So that's why this shift is backwards from what it originally says. Um, we have to undo that, that minus 5 to get back to normal, to get back to our original outputs. And of course, it would be the same if we did plus 5 here. Um, so, but this is going to be a horizontal shift, okay. right? And let's take a quick look at what the domain and range would be. So originally our domain was 0 to infinity. Uh, our range was 0 to infinity. Well, what have we done? We haven't modified our outputs, so our range stays the same. We have modified our inputs by increasing them all uh, by 5. So. We're going to increase this value by 5, and increasing infinity by 5 doesn't do anything. So that's going to be your new domain and range. Let's take a look at what happens. Oops. All right, we're going to take our inputs and then change the sign. That's all this does. Okay, um, negative square root of x here. Um, so what's that going to do? It's just going to switch the sign on our outputs. We had 1, 2, 3. Now it's negative 1, 2, 3. Um, well, what's that going to do? That's going to reflect over this x-axis. Right. Over x-axis. Okay. So hopefully, visually, that makes sense. Um, let's see what happens to our domain and range. So again, um, copy and paste so we can do this faster. Um, so grab this. So this was our domain and range. We haven't changed our inputs. So we've changed our outputs. So our signs on our outputs are going to change. So negative 0 is still 0, and then we go to negative infinity. Of course, that's not how we write this. Okay, We write negative infinity to 0. But all we did is we just changed the sign on our lower bound and our upper bound. Okay. And... Now we're changing the sign on our input, okay? So instead of 0, 1, 4, 9, now we have negative 9, negative 4, negative 1, 0 to get our original inputs. Um, and what's that going to do? Well, instead of reflecting over this x-axis, now we're going to reflect over the y-axis. Okay, this is going to create a y-axis. Oops, axis. Okay, what's this going to do to our domain and range? We didn't change the, the range. We didn't change the outputs. We changed the inputs. So we're going to switch the sign here on our inputs. Okay, so this is going to go from 0 to 0, from infinity to negative infinity. Again, that's backwards, so... But again, all I did is I changed the sign on my lower bound and upper bound to get my domain and range there. All right, what are we doing now? Now we're taking our parent function, oops, our parent function and multiplying the output by two. So square two times square root of x. Um, what does that do? Just takes our our outcomes, multiplies them by two. Um, what's that going to do? Instead of zero, it's going to be zero. Instead of one, it's going to be two. It's going to double all of these values. So it's going to stretch it vertically. Okay. 
So it's this vertical stretch. Um, if you did something uh, less than one, like one half, that's gonna be a vertical shrink, okay? So vertical stretch uh, factor of two. All right, um, what's that gonna do to our domain and range? Well, it doesn't do anything to our domain because we didn't do anything. And it's just gonna val uh, double both of these values. It's gonna double zero, which doesn't do anything. It's gonna double infinity, which doesn't do anything. Our output still goes from zero to infinity. Okay, we're just doing that same um, transformation to our lower and upper bound. You don't have to think. You don't have to sit there and stress out about it. Just do that same transformation to whatever got transformed, uh, whether it be your, your inputs or your outputs. All right, turn this off. Well, now we're doubling our inputs. Now we're, we're multiplying whatever we're inputting by two. Now, to get those same outputs that we were getting before though, we're gonna have to adjust. We're gonna have to cut our inputs um, by half. So now, to get the same output we were getting when we had one, now we're gonna have to do one half. Because what's one half times two? Well, that's the one that we had before. How do we get the same output we had when we originally had four? Well, now I'm gonna to have to do four halves or, or two, okay? Um, I'll just go ahead and say two. Two times two will get us that four that we originally had. So we're taking all of our outputs and we're doing the opposite of this operation here to get back to normal, okay? So when I'm doubling my x's here, I'm gonna have my x's over here. Um, so what's gonna happen when I cut my x's in half? Well. It's gonna, it's gonna shrink it toward this uh, axis right here. Uh, every x value is gonna get cut in half. So this x value was one, now it's one half. This x value was four, now it's two. This is nine, now it's four and a half. Okay, so we're not changing our y's, we're changing our x's to adjust for what we were doing before. Okay, um, what's that gonna do to domain and range? Sorry, let me write this as a horizontal shrink. Factor of one half, a reciprocal of that number right there. Um, okay, um, so what's this gonna do to our domain and range? Well, it doesn't affect our range because we didn't do anything to that. Um, our domain, um, our input, we took those values, we divided them by two. Well, what's zero divided by two? Still zero. What's infinity divided by two? Still infinity. So it's not gonna affect our domain and range at all. We can still put any number in our domain, uh, any, sorry, any positive number or zero in our domain, and, uh, and it's gonna still work just fine. All right, so that's the idea behind a um, uh, behind all of these different transformations. So you've got um, movement up and down, okay, shifts up and down. You've got reflections over the x-axis, the y-axis, and you've got these um, stretches and shrinks, uh, either a vertical shrink or a horizontal shrink.